I guess you're ready for chapter 11, the miracle. Let's read. Charlie entered the store and laid the damp dollar bill on the counter. One Wonka's Whippo Scrumptious Fudge Mellow Delight, he said, remembering how much he had loved the one on his birthday. The man behind the counter looked fat and well-fed. He had big lips and fat cheeks and a very fat neck. The fat around his neck bulged out all over, all around the top of his collar like a rubber ring. He turned and reached behind him for the candy bar, and then he turned back again and handed it to Charlie. Charlie grabbed it and quickly tore off the wrapper and took an enormous bite, and then another, and another, and oh, the joy of being able to cram large pieces of something sweet and solid into one's mouth, the sheer blissful joy of being able to fill one's mouth with, with rich, solid food. You look like you wanted that one, Sonny, the shopkeeper said pleasantly. Charlie nodded, his mouth bulging with chocolate. The shopkeeper put Charlie's change on the counter. Take it easy, he said. It'll give you a gut ache if you swallow it like that without chewing. Charlie went on wolfing the candy. He couldn't stop, and in less than a half a minute, the whole thing had disappeared down his throat. He was quite out of breath, but felt marvelous, marvelously, extraordinarily happy. He reached out his hand to take the change, but then he paused. His eyes were just above the level of the counter. They were staring at the little silver coins laying there. The coins were all dimes. There were nine of them all together. Surely it wouldn't matter if he just spent one more. Mm, I think, he said quietly, I think I'll just have one more of those candy bars. The same kind as before, please. Why not, said the fat shopkeeper, reaching behind him again, taking another Whipple scrumptious fudge mellow delight from the shelf. He laid it on the counter. Charlie picked it up and tore off the wrapper, and suddenly from underneath the wrapper, there came a brilliant flash of gold. Charlie's heart stood still. It's a golden ticket! screamed the shopkeeper, leaping up about a foot in the air. You've got a golden ticket. You found the last golden ticket. Hey, what you know? Come and look at this, everybody. The kids found Wonka's last golden ticket. There it is. It's right there in his hands. It seemed as though the shopkeeper might be going to have a fit. In my shop, too, he yelled. He found it right here in my own little shop. Somebody call the newspapers quick and let them know. Watch out now, Sonny. Don't you tear it as you unwrap it. That thing is precious. In a few seconds, there was a crowd of about 20 people clustering around Charlie, and many more were pushing their way in from the street. Everybody wanted to get a look at the golden ticket at the lucky finder. Where is it? shouted somebody. Hold it up so we can all see it. There it is, someone else shouted. He's holding it in his hands. See the gold shining? How did he manage to find it, I'd like to know? A large boy shouted angrily. Twenty bars a day. I've been buying for weeks and weeks. Think of all the free stuff he'll be getting too. A lifetime supply. He'll need it, the skinny little shrimp, said a girl laughing. Charlie hadn't moved. He hadn't even unwrapped the golden ticket from around the candy bar. He was standing very still, holding it tightly in both hands, while the crowd pushed and shouted from all around him. He felt quite dizzy. There was a particular floating sensation coming over him, as though he were floating up in the air like a balloon. His feet didn't seem to be touching the ground at all. He could hear his heart thumping away, away loudly somewhere in his throat. At that point, he became aware of a hand wrestling lightly on his shoulder. And when he looked, he saw a tall man standing over him. Listen, the man whispered. 
I'll buy it from you. I'll give you $50. How about it, eh? And I'll give you a new bicycle as well, okay? Are you crazy? shouted a woman who was standing equally close. Why, I'll give him $500 for that ticket. You want to sell that ticket for $500, young man? It's quite enough of that, the fat shopkeeper shouted, pushing his way through the crowd and taking Charlie firmly by the arm. Leave the kid alone, will you? Make way. Let him out. And to Charlie, as he led him to the door, he whispered, Don't you let anybody have it. Take it straight home quickly before you lose it. Run all the way. And don't stop until you get there, understand? Charlie nodded. You know something? The shopkeeper said, pausing a moment and smiling at Charlie. I have a feeling you needed a break like this. I'm awfully glad you got it. Good luck to you, Sonny. Thank you, Charlie said, and off he went, running through the snow as fast as his legs could go. And he flew past Mr. Willy Wonka's factory. He turned and he waved to it and he sang out, I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you soon. And five minutes later, he arrived at his own home. Wow. I hope you come back to read chapter 12, what it said on the golden ticket. Until then, see you.